Hi, my name is Matt Rechenberg and I'm the project manager of the OpenQRM project. I would like to introduce the next generation of OpenQRM to you. During the last months, a small team, including myself, worked on OpenQRM 4.0, which is now going to be released in its first beta version. OpenQRM 4.0 contains several major changes compared to the previous versions since it's a complete rewrite or better port of OpenQRM from Java to PHP. The focus of this rewrite is keeping it simple. Run everywhere. We want to support every Linux distribution, especially Debian and Ubuntu. Clean up. Remove all not needed code. Reduce the size of the code base because less code means less bugs. Using existing components instead of providing own binaries and libraries. This includes better packaging and dependencies. A better plugin management. Support for multiple databases. For example, MySQL, Oracle, DB2 and Postgres. Focusing on virtualization and storage management making the installation more than easy. What you see here on the video is a screencast from a development session which shows the compilation and installation of OpenQRM 4.0 from its sources. OpenQRM features a developer-friendly build system which automatically caches already compiled components to speed up the build process. Now we are installing OpenQRM from a binary package, here on a Ubuntu system VRD package. The motivation for this rewrite is to finally include all the serious feedback we received from the open source community, which sadly didn't make it into the last releases. Pictures tell more than words, so let's have a look at OpenQRM 4.0. After installing the package or building it from the sources, the OpenQRM server user interface is available with a web browser. The username is OpenQRM with the password OpenQRM. Please be sure to change this default password immediately after logging in. Ok, this is the main OpenQRM user interface. The basic concept of OpenQRM is to separate all components of a data center, like servers, storage, network, virtualization, and so on. Then OpenQRM manages the combination of those modules which enables lots of automatism. The general architecture of OpenQRM is kept totally pluggable. That means most of the functionality in OpenQRM is provided by its plugins which can directly interface with the OpenQRM server and benefit from lots of hooks they can use to do things. What we see here is the plugin manager. It allows to easily enable, disable, start or stop plugins via the user interface. Enabled plugins are automatically adding their menu to the plugin menu to provide access to the additional functionality. As mentioned before, this new version of OpenQRM focuses on virtualization and storage management. Plugins for several different storage server types like NFS, iSCSI, AOE, CoRate and NetApp are available. We also integrated some mainstream virtualization technologies into OpenQRM already, which are VMware Server, Xen and Linux vServer. With OpenQRM's appliance-based deployment, system administrators may decide at any time if a server, or better a server image, should run on a physical server or in a virtual machine from any available type. 
Migrating from one virtualization type to another is completely transparent and does not involve any changes to the server image itself. One of the key features of OpenQRM 4.0 is that it is not only a user interface for a single virtualization technology, but it manages the deployment, monitoring and the virtual machines of local and remote virtualization servers from different technology types. Also, OpenQRM 4.0 provides mechanisms to automatically capture server images from existing servers and to transform those server images from one storage type to another. For example, an existing server can be captured as NFS server image, then transformed into an iSCSI LAN, which then could be used to install it to the local disk. The integration with the different storage server types is providing some more interesting features. A captured server image can be used as a server template. In case new servers should be deployed, OpenQRM can initiate a snapshot command on the storage server which will clone the image using the modern volume management functionality. This clone of the original server image will be immediately available for deployment. What we see here in the video are some examples of server image snapshotting via the LVM storage plugin. Okay, this was a short overview about the next generation of OpenQRM. We, the OpenQRM team, hoping that you enjoy this first beta release. Many thanks for your attention and have a great day.